South African Justice Department refused to extradite this Zimbabwean national because there was no guarantee from the Zimbabwean government that he would not be hanged. This is Joshua Duwe, a 29-year-old man from Majlambusi in Burilima in Matebeleland South. It is quite difficult to get a job in rural Zimbabwe, so when he got a job guarding fields at a farm, he was delighted. For the job to be easy, they needed to have a weapon, so they were given a rifle together with his co-worker, Leonard Moyo. On the 4th of June 2009, his co-worker decided to go deeper into the forest to look for firewood so that they would make their meal at the field. Leonard, being the one who was assigned the rifle, decided to leave the rifle behind because it was a bit heavy. As soon as Leonard took off, Joshua made a very surprising decision to steal the rifle and run away from his job. He saw the rifle as an opportunity to make quick and easy cash through robbery. That very night, he went to a homestead that was a few kilometers away from where he used to work. It was called Ashalo Farm. He then knocked at the door at around 7 p.m. and introduced himself as a meat seller. A woman opened the door and he pointed his rifle at her, demanding cash. The woman then told him that she had no cash on her and she was all alone. So he took this as an opportunity to take her to a nearby bush and raped her once. After his act, fearing that she would report him to the police, he decided to march her to the next farm to commit further acts of robbery. But as soon as she saw that he had been distracted, she took advantage and took off running into the forest. In an attempt to stop her, Joshua then fired two shots into the air, but she did not stop. He had just made a mistake because he did not know that there were two police officers that were close to the farm. So when they heard the two shots, they decided to go and investigate. When he saw the two cops approaching, he then fled, leaving behind the rifle. The two police officers could not catch up with him, but then they took the rifle as evidence. Two days after his encounter with the police, he went to another homestead in Dombodema in the middle of the night. The homestead belonged to a grandmother of three, Mr. Siwa Due, an 87-year-old woman. Her grandchildren had gone to a neighbor's house to watch television, so she was alone at her homestead sitting outside her kitchen. He then demanded money from her, but she refused to obey him, so he took an iron bar and struck her until she died. When the grandchildren returned home, they found their grandmother dead in a pool of blood, and Joshua was beside the body. He then threatened them and forced them to open the bedroom, which they did, and he stole 800 rand and a blanket and fled the scene. On the 17th of June 2009, he went to a hotel named Fig Tree and demanded money from a woman named Miss Cindy Somove. Miss Nui was staying at the hotel and he attacked her with a log until she gave him 590 rand. After this crime spree, he then skipped the country into South Africa where he was apprehended by the South African police. The Zimbabwean Justice Department tried to get him extradited back to Zimbabwe so that he could face the consequences of his actions, but the South African government wanted assurance that they would not sentence him to death since they themselves don't support the death sentence. The South African government then threatened to release him if there was no assurance, which they did in 2016, seven years later. He was then shipped back to Zimbabwe as a deportee together with other illegal immigrants. Although he had been in South Africa for over seven years, people in his community still remembered what he had done, so he was spotted at Malambuze Business Center and they alerted the police. He was then arrested and questioned by detectives. He admitted to all his crimes, even giving intimate details of the nature of his crimes. He would later be found guilty of theft and rape and sentenced to 20 years in prison. His murder case was tried at Mulawayo High Court, where he was found guilty of murdering the grandmother and sentenced to life imprisonment. The judge said he did not sentence him to death because he showed regret and remorse for his crimes. However, because his actions resulted in loss of life, he had to be completely removed from society. This homicide file is a stark reminder that quick and easy cash has got consequences and we must work hard for our money. May her soul continue to rest in eternal peace.